Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is DSP News, the unreliable ones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the newsroom and welcome to the Gautopia News Network, your unreliable source for DSP News. I don't have a tagline yet, but someone in the last video gave me some pretty good suggestions, so we'll, we'll switch it up depending on the broadcast at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, what is on the, uh, what's on the, tele, on the teleprompter today? We are here with Snoop Brunel, one of my favorites. DSP Gaming. Pay me to rewatch old videos each month, and rant and ranting against the chat. Now, this ladies and gentlemen is coming off of that ten-year retrospective, aka ten years of self-masturbation, aka a decade of failure. By far, one of the most eye-opening situations for DSP, of course. For all of you here, you've all walloped in his failure before. Hopefully, you had a good laugh out of it, but hopefully, you learned something too in some ways. Um, but for Phil, he actually had to really look at that. I mean, he really had to absorb it and see the uh, the depths of his failure in a lot of ways. How he defended content for a decade, swearing up and down that it was good, and it wasn't. It was expired potato salad, but he tried to pass it off as it was fresh, and it wasn't. It wasn't. And because of that, no one else ate any bit, ate, ate anything else. It was like going to a barbecue, finding one thing spoiled and just looking at the rest of it and being like, I can't trust this. Now, I've never actually gone to a barbecue and had that happen. Just saying. Um, <laughs> and to be honest with you, how his fan base reacted to, reacted to it or reacted to this was even more interesting. Because people really sat there and looked back at some of his old material and were like, wow. A couple of years ago, I did. I thought that shit was really funny, but now that I'm actually looking at it, it's kind of, it wasn't. Or it was kind of depressing. Or look at how he treated people, and so on and so forth. So him doing that didn't necessarily open Pandora's box, but I think it opened the eyes of some of the cult members in that he's not a good person. He is not a decent human being. He's a piece of shit, and, he's always, and he always has been. Hence the reason why, in my own personal opinion... Phil was pushing the indoctrination of, I've changed, I'm better. What happened back then, I was dumb, I was stupid, you know, I, I was just going with what YouTube allowed me to do at the time, but I'm better now. He was planning for this for a while. Not the fact that he was really uh, revving up for that whole 10-year anniversary thing. We all know he's been shilling that for a minute, but it's not that. I'm talking about the psych psychological aspect of it. How he was saying that I've changed. I'm a better person than what I am, uh, than what I was. I've grown as it pertains to myself and my content. He was pushing that for weeks too. So when we ended up getting to this retrospective stream or decade celebration of failure, he was able to basically talk down at least some of the criticisms that were posed towards him. Especially when you look at that fan retrospective uh, that fan ridicule shit and some of the other just weak picks that he chose. He didn't, he had out of 50,000 plus videos off one channel and then a couple of thousand off, you know, the other three channels. That's all, that was what he presented. This is what you serve, if you will. And this is supposed to appease who? You know what I mean? So now he's, it looks like he's going to try to push this as a month-to-month -month thing. Now, is it going to be a Patreon goal? Oh, you bet your sweet asses it's going to be a Patreon goal. Phil don't do nothing for free. So, now he's going to pay... He's going to have these idiots pay him to do this shit month after month after month. Which means that he has to dig deeper and deeper into Pandora's box to go ahead and find out what's there. Which means it's going to require more time for him to screen the videos. You know what I'm saying? Because if not... If he decides to put all that work in, air quotes, and he don't and he doesn't uh, screen the clients, then people like me are going to come in there and pick out 
the videos that he fucked up on and he's just going to lay it out there for us. So if anybody wanted definitive proof outside of what I usually put in the um, description box, or if you're not watching Tevin's streams weekly, it's all there too. He's he's your he's an active historian. Go to his streams, watch it. Um, the proof is all there. See, he's gonna stumble eventually because he can't screen all those videos. He just can't. He has a lot of time to. He's not going to bed till like four o'clock in the morning. Which leads into another interesting situation. Let's go ahead and bounce off that for a minute. A decade, wor a decade's worth of failure. He's going to expect these guys to pay him for it. It's going to end up blowing up in his face. Now, oh, and if people s stop supporting it in any type of way, shape, or form, it's going to be a slap or a knock against him. Where he now the fan base is actively revolting against his content, being like, Phil, we don't want to see this. This is boring. Which is only going to be another knock on him from the last stream that he just did, where he saw his own failure. Now, more and more people are going to actually see it and be vocal about it, at least I hope. Now, let's jump on to that second part about how much time does the man have. He has a considerable amount of time on his hands. Why he keeps making up excuses on he won't do reviews or he won't put a montage together for the holidays like he used to, or so on and so forth, is all smoke and mirrors. He has all the time in the world. You're telling me he can't edit a video watch while watching WWE? You're telling me he can't have a couple of drinks while editing a video when um, when Gundam and Full Bender Television both do it? Shouts out to both of those guys. You should watch their... You should subscribe to their channels. Um, you're telling me these guys can do that and they don't? Make, what? Kenny drunk right now! <laughs> so, well, he's tipsy right now. He's not drunk. But he's, he's tipsy though. Um, so what's, so none of us have any excuses, so what's his? And on top of that, why are you staying up, Phil? And I'm directing this directly towards you, Phil. Why are you up till four o'clock in the morning when you have a girlfriend upstairs that isn't doing much of nothing? And ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to pay all that money for the stable, goddamn, you better put that saddle on her and ride her till it breaks. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's the point of having a girlfriend if you're not going to do anything with her? I mean, unless you're going to let her shape herself up and get herself right for the next man, which if that's the case, good for you, Phil. But for all the people that aren't cucks, you might want to go ahead and handle that. Which leads into another interesting theory. I can't remember who originally posed, uh, posed it, but I'm going to give it to James Lesser. Phil, does Cat have another, have like a pull-out bed or something in that bedroom? And if so, is that where she's actually laying her head at night? And if so, is that the reason why you stay up all, uh, stay up at night? And if so, and being that you get drunk, and when you get drunk, he for some reason doesn't usually drink upstairs. He only drinks downstairs. Are you falling asleep on your couch? And if so, is that the reason why you look disheveled over your last couple streams? And being that cat is working later and later, to my particular understanding, because, um, you know, that gym time is, well, oh shit, that gym time or that gym time? Anyway, someone's putting someone's putting in the weights with her. That's all that matters. The point is, is um, uh, is it possible, Phil? Is it possible that a she doesn't live there, b she's working late, then going to the gym and getting worked out herself, and she's not cooking you any dinner because she's going in later, and you're getting more and more frustrated and upset. Hence the reason why you're lashing out at the chat. Also, speaking of the chat. What is the situation that you're having where there's like a ma there's like a, a miniature revolt going on? It's not a full blown uh, rebellion yet, but it's starting to get there. Where it seems like Tut, after he's made his return, has certainly uh, won the people over, if you will. And you seem to become you're seem you it seems that you're becoming more and more upset at it. So much so, in fact, that there's a general belief that you're going to turn the word tut into a banned word, which seems interesting because he's not banned yet. Nor would I ever see a reason for you to ban him. So why would you... So what's going on with that? Also, another thing that I thought I'd, I thought I'd bring up is uh, since that 10-year retrospective thing, Brightside Vikings name has been brought up a couple times too. And uh, it sounds like you're thinking about turning that into a banned word also. Which, if that's the case, are you going to turn Sidella into a banned word also? And the thing is... As it pertains to you, Sidella. Don't worry, the video's still coming. Um, these underage chicks that you may or may not be associating yourselves with, uh, you might want to chill with that, bro. <laughs> you, 
you're like 26, 27, they put dudes like you in jail for that, disability or not. So you might need to chill. I understand. I understand that you might be using your uh, your disability to bring in chicks to get sympathy. Good for you. Not really. If they were your own age, maybe. But since they're not, uh, you know, I'm not saying that's the only way you can get a girl. I'm just saying that seems like what you're doing. All I have to say about that is, dude, is like pick one your own age. Don't follow in Daddy Phil's footsteps or hoof steps, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure there's a nice girl out there who is all about is all about that 1488 that you can find to be your girlfriend. Look at Chris Chan. He had him. Well, a lot of those girlfriends are fake. Okay, there was that one chick that he had who was in. Well, she wasn't really into him. She was into his wallet. Huh. Okay. Just in case you guys don't know what I'm talking about, quick lore. Can't think of the girl's name. Doesn't matter. Chris Chan was actually cool with this one chick that he used to actually play, like, Pokemon or whatever with. And they weren't actually an item, but, like, he used to... But, like, it was, like, his only real friend. Or at least only real female friend. And he used to buy her, like, Nazi propaganda and shit. Like, she's she's one of these chicks who gets off on that type of stuff. Like, she gets off on, like, like, n like racism and, like, Hitler, like, paraphernalia and shit like that. That's... I don't know. That's what... It's what she's into. And whatnot. And he ended up uh, drawing a, a comic book about her, and it was kind of weird because uh, when it ended up coming out and ex being exposed, and he ended up revealing that she was that she was the actual female character that he had illustrated being screwed by uh, whatever he calls a Sonic character. Um, he said that he actually had to illustrate the sex acts so he wouldn't actually rape her. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a fucking wormhole, if a fucking vortex, if you guys ever want to look into it. Matter of fact, I, re I recommend a couple of videos, um, but uh, the f first and the main one is the one that's done by Argent. It's like an hour and like 40, 45 minutes. It's a good watch. He he, he pretty much goes over some of the main events in Chris Chan's life, and um, that part is in there. If I remember to, I'll link it in the description. Check it out at your own leisure. But Chris Chan's uh, a head... He, he's got some really messed up shit going on there. In any case, let's jump off, off topic. So there you go, Sidella. Learn from... I don't know. Do something. And tell your mom thank you for the cookies. I'll be for, I'll be coming over for the MILF later. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and now get into the broadcast. I've spoken long enough as it pertains to this extra. And uh, <laughs> let's just get into the broadcast at hand. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is... DSP News, always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on at GTG Network and Productions. You guys all know the slogan. It's time to watch me work. Warn everyone. Warning. What you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. I like how you're laughing too. Well, it's funny. So I have an idea that's based off of an idea that a, a viewer suggested to me, okay? <laughs> Alright, I have an idea that's based off somebody else's idea. Okay, fair enough. Alright, so first thing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Snorperdell, DSP Gaming. Pay me to rewatch old videos each month and ranting against the chat. Secondly, the name of that Sonic character that uh, Chris Chan came up with is called, uh, is, uh, I just thought of it, actually, is Sonic, I think it's, it's Sonic Chew or something like that. It's a combination of Pikachu, and, uh, Sonic and Pikachu. And three, ladies and gentlemen, that's what happens when you just become a little too greedy. That pig coming up on there on that little haystack and whatnot, he probably could have taken one or two little nibbles and just went on his way. But no, he thought he could eat at the table, and it came back to bite him. In a lot of ways, in a lot of ways on what's going on currently, well, at the time that I'm recording this anyway, 
because you know things happen quick around here. Uh, as the things that's going on with DSP and low tier God sharing King Tut. Now, theoretically, King Tut was over there with Phil first, but uh, Tut seems to like low tier God's environment a little bit better. And um, well, you know, what are you going to do? Because obviously, Phil has to feel a certain type of way about that. He doesn't seem to mind sharing his women, but he damn sure has a problem with sharing his money. But what you gonna do? <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> that was good. And I want to run it by you guys. Let's see how you guys feel about this. So here's the deal. Uh, as you guys know, last week I did my special 10th anniversary retrospective streaming event, where for an entire day I went back in time and we together watched back a lot of classic content, including things like all the problems I had against Deathstroke when I played the original Injustice game five plus years ago. Do you want to play the fucking game? The whole entirety of Project 7, with me doing special behind-the-scenes commentary on it, uh, looking back at some of my friend requests, ridicule, and, and original reviews and vlogs and the like, looking back at some classic playthroughs and the like. So it was a very fun event, okay? <laughs> that event was horrible. I'm not going to get into it fully because the previous broadcast goes over it. But it was horrible. He didn't pick... He went with stuff that was really just boring or safe. He didn't go with anything that was kind of outside of the norm. And he he has, like like I said, like a four to six year gap in between a lot of that footage. Was that stuff just not good? Like, was not some of that not just up to snuff? Or did you purposely, Phil, go into, go into this retrospective, whatever you want to call it, and handpick what you thought was going to be entertaining instead of going with what could have been entertaining to the fans. Or, ladies and gentlemen, it could be that he, just the sheer amount of videos that he has, he doesn't know what's there and what isn't. It's very possible. Interestingly enough, too, one more thing before we get uh, we get moving on this. I went to his Dark Side Phil channel because uh, there's some stuff for Gout and, uh, Gout and Wine that I wanted to go ahead and look up real fast moving forward. And I saw that there are three episodes in a Project 7 um, playlist that he has that are completely private. Now, I don't know if those are the videos from when he went to, uh, what was that? Was it a Mag Magfest or whatever it was when he had the panel? I don't know if it's those videos because that's what I need. I need one of those videos in particular. I need, I need about the first like eight or nine minutes of it. Um, but if so, you're being a bitch about that, Phil. And, and also on top of that, Phil, why are you privating videos? I mean, you know, cash rules, everything around me. So why would you have a video that's, I don't know, since from 2011, be privated, you know, especially linked to Project 7, unless you're planning on doing something on your own with that? What's wrong, Phil? You gonna, are you going to try to rehash Project 7 again? Are you going to try to throw stuff together in a Project 7, like, mashup or montage or something? What exactly are you, are you, are you planning with Project 7? Because for some reason... He's had a, he's been putting a tremendous amount of focus on that, which makes me think that he's going for one more big cash out. Because he doesn't trust anybody enough to actually try to refilm it and try to finish it. So what are you trying to do with that film? I'll keep you guys posted. DSP News. Very fun event. I really enjoyed it. You guys seem to enjoy it. The views on YouTube are doing pretty good. Everyone seems to be very positive about this retrospective event that I did. Okay? And I've been getting some very positive feedback saying, Phil, you know, we actually really liked seeing you do that. Instead of just doing this like as a special anniversary event, why don't you set this up as something you do maybe every month or every other month? Maybe you could even do it as like a, a stream subs goal, where you hit your sub goal for the month, you do this as a one day, you know, every couple of months, people can nominate on stuff they want to see you go back and commentate over from your past, right? And I was like, you know what? Okay, fair enough. Uh, that does make sense, I think. But here's the thing, and this is kind of why I want to run it by you guys. The things that were for that special 10th anniversary event were kind of spe a special situation. So for example... You wanted to see me commentate on the Deathstroke matches in Injustice because you wanted to know what was the deal with Deathstroke. Why was he such a pain in the ass to beat in that game at launch? And I was able to watch the matches. You could, the I think anybody could deduct how what was it that made Deathstroke so, so fucking frustrating and why his keep away game was so good. I don't think that's hard to figure out. So you commentating over it did what and provided what? I understand that most of your fan base are kids and the rest of them are just special to say the very least. But I don't think that was something that needed to be explained. It really didn't. I mean, you could just explain, especially since what, halfway through the fight he just gave up? And last time I checked, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need an explanation about a quitter. That just doesn't seem plausible to me. You know what I mean? 
It, it just doesn't seem that way. Hence the reason why he's not a gamer. Because, ladies and gentlemen, a game. <laughs> if he was a gamer, right, he would actually play games outside of his work. And he doesn't do that. He only pays. He only plays the pay, or be paid, if you will. So that makes him doesn't make him a gamer. Kind of makes him a video game whore, to be honest with you. But because everything he does as it pertains to video games, he has to be paid for it. Whether he's playing it, whether he's talking about it, endorsing it. Well, he doesn't endorse anything, um, except for those shitty shirts, of course. Um, so yeah, so that cuts the whole gamer narrative out of that. Which, I'm going to talk about that in a future video, too. Like, we're going to go ahead and dissect into that. Because um, I'm starting to get tired of hearing that. I'm tired of hearing him uh, associate himself with gamers, and he's not a gamer. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't do anything that's game-related on his free time. Last time I checked, how many bottles of Tangeray you could go through in the span of a week wasn't a game. It could be, but it is, as far as I'm concerned, it's not. Okay? Once I get it outlawed in Galtopia, you'll see what I mean. TSP news. ...the matches and tell you guys what was actually happening. So for the first time, a lot of people understood why Deathstroke was such a pain in the ass in that game. Rather than when I originally played it, uh, I was just basically raging constantly and not really saying anything coherent, right? Or for example, when I was doing the Project 7 stuff, we would watch Project 7 together and I would stop and pause and give you insightful behind-the-scenes commentary on, oh, okay, this was something that, you know, John thought up and put into the episode and ended up working out really well. Or, you know, this was, here's what happened, this was, this was my piece of equipment that I had lying around the house while well, this is the stuff that these guys brought in and you know here's some props you know basically I did a lot of behind the scenes stuff you never knew about Project 7 so if you didn't see that yet I strongly recommend you check out those videos on DSP Gaming on YouTube they're live oh here. let me talk about that just in case I didn't bring that up um in the last broadcast so this guy right here for Project 7 which is part 10 or part 9 it's the last part of the that whole perspective retrospective uh situation he ends up putting up a thumbnail of John and Howard. I don't remember if he was in it or not, but I know John and Howard were in it. And it got a lot of clicks, which is what he wanted. But then he got called out for it by mainly people within his own fan base, and then he turned around and he switched it up. Actually, I'm pretty sure I did bring this up in the last broadcast. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I've always said, as far back as I can remember, because I think the first major top topic that I harped on um, when I started all this, was the whole John and Howard situation. Is Phil has always been driven to to profit off of that situation in any way he could. And not only ripping them off in the revamping of Project 7 when he ended up getting to Seattle, but anything else moving forward. And to be honest with you, with this whole retrospective situation, it was just another chance for him to do it, but he had to give it time. He knows damn well that within his long-standing fan base, or cult, that there are people who still are chomping at the bit for Project 7 and believe that it will somehow come together. Whether John and Howard are in it or not. Or at least that's what I thought. So I ended up talking to a guy on Twitter in DMs, and he was basically like, you know, I really like Project 7. I really wish he would, he would you know, get it started back up again. But it wouldn't be the same without John and Howard. And I was like, well, how would they even do that? Even if he was able to to um, come to some type of agreement with John and Howard. And not even reestablishing their friendship, because I don't know if Phil's going to be willing to do that. But even if he did come to a situation where it's like, guys, let's at least finish this off. How would they actually do the recording? No, neither, neither party is going to go across country to do it. So it wouldn't work. And Phil's editing ability is in no is nowhere near where it would need to be, where these guys could record themselves, and then Phil could record himself, and they could somehow blend it in. It wouldn't... It's... Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So how else would they do it? How else would they make that happen? And this guy actually came up with a pretty good suggestion off of a video that I had said earlier, where Phil needs to go and visit his parents, which he should. He, he should visit 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 his, fa his, uh, his family no matter what, or his parents no matter what. But in doing so, he could record back and forth in between those times he goes out there. Now, I had said personally that that would be a couple of visits over the span of a couple of years. And he was like, well, we've waited this long. Who says we wouldn't wait a little longer? Now, I give this person a lot of credit. I won't bring his name up because he asked me not to. But, um, <laughs> which for good reason, uh, to be honest. But um, I give him a lot of credit in how optimistic he is 
And to be honest, that's reasonable. Because one, he should go and see his family. He should introduce Kat to them if he's going to keep them in the long run. Because if Phil ends up landing in some type of 50, 55, 60 gallon drum, they should at least have a face to put to the person who put their son in there. <laughs> uh, that's a joke. Maybe. Anyway, um, so in truth though, real being serious, he one, should introduce Kat to them. It, it, it seems reasonable. Two, he should go and visit them anyway. See how they're doing. See if they need any help around the house. I know I'm talking like a decent human fucking being, but just bear with me for a minute. And then more importantly than that, go out there and whatever whatever missteps that he made years ago, at least go and apologize for it. Even if they don't accept your apology, even if they tell you to fuck off, at least apologize. At least get that part off your conscience. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if they don't forgive you, at least you did it. At least you attempted. At least you tried. You know what I'm saying? And um, and then go from there. But then again, it would still, as I had said before, it would be years before he could even really talk to these guys about trying to finish Project 7. So you're talking like, so we're talking like a seven-year plan, if you will. And that's a whole lot of time. And I don't know if Phil will even be around that long. I just don't see it really happening, but it could. That's the only way Project 7 would ever get done. It would be over the span of like seven or eight, like six or seven years. He would need at least two good years just to rebuild the relationship if he can. And then it'll be at least another three or four years of, of recording. And that's him going out there twice a year. And if you go back to how many, uh, go back to the original Project 7, when they went to the actual stage select, I don't know, what was there, like maybe nine 10 stages, I guess. So you think each stage, uh, each stage would take at least two visits. So let's say he was able to visit his parents every three months. Okay, that's four times a year. That's still only eight stages over the span of, eh, well, no. Yeah, because if he does, yeah, that'd be eight stages over four years. At the very least. He might have to just cut the other one short. Like I said, that would be a long-term plan, though, if that's the case. And, to be honest, if he could pull that off, and if he could get John and Howard onto a video talking about it, there'd be some sweet, sweet money that would be made on that. He might actually be able to... Uh, he might be able to reclaim a lot of people's trust if they were able to come on and, and help him do that. Here's the thing. Now, let's jump back to reality for just a second. Um, that's never going to happen. I don't see John and Howard, either one of them, wanting to participate in, participate in that. That's kind of, I think that's a part of their past that they would rather let go. For Phil, he really doesn't have an option. Even if he was able to bring fans in to help um, to help him shoot and edit and do all that, it's not going to be the same. How are you going to, how would you even finish, how would you even finish off John and Howard's appearance to cut in to where the new guys are going to come in? He would have to kill John and Howard off. Or he could just do the shitty shit they do in the the shitty transition they do in Hollywood and be like, oh, John and Howard are just all of a sudden different now. And then move forward. It would still be bad, either which way. So Phil, and that's just someone thinking outside the box. But for Phil, he doesn't give a shit about the friendships. Well, at least the woman Howard and respect the pack. Um, which is amusing in its own right, to be honest. Um, he doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about trying to work that shit out unless they come back to him on their hands and he's begging him. Neither one of those men are going to do that. So, the only thing he can do is profit off what he has. So, all he can do is build off the nostalgia of what Project 7 was from its beginning to the end. Now, that leads me into what I said earlier about why those three videos came up missing. Or, not missing, but why they're privated. And that's if those are the three videos from that um, convention they went to where they were talking about it. If not, then what were those three videos and why do you have them on private? If they're duplicates of other videos, then he, all he has to do is delete them. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I went on a bit of a tantrum there. Let's continue. You can watch them on demand. <clears throat> so that was great. But my question is this. What other kind of stuff from my past would you maybe like to see me do commentary on? Because I'm not exactly sure that I have, you know, a body of work 
that could give you that kind of insight. Like, most of the stuff I put out there is raw gameplay, right? Which is great, but the raw gameplay, how unnecessarily would I tell you, oh, uh, you know, this is behind-the-scenes stuff. Really, there's not a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff when it comes to the raw gameplay. You're just seeing uh, my live... I agree with Storm Brunel. It sounds like he's, run he's running out of ideas for that milk money. Here's the thing, Phil. Let me help you out with that. This is from a, a pup in a sharp suit. Um, uh, Phil, you know how you used to have... You've had emergency streams before, or emergency videos. You've had important update videos. You've had videos where Phil has talked about certain problems that YouTube has given him, and so on and so forth, um, throughout the years. He could very well go back over all of those videos and explain what YouTube was doing at the time, in retrospect and whatnot, and explain what the situation was and how YouTube kind of screwed him up. He could do that. He could go back and look at some of his, um, and uh, look at some of those old tournament footage videos, which he's done that, I think he did that in his retrospective stream. And go over that a little further. And hopefully you would be honest, Phil, because let me break this down. Tevin's already done it, but let me break it down a little bit. Phil was going to these tournaments and recording matches and then immediately uploading them on the YouTube. You're probably like, why is he doing that? Well, because be because of the amount of videos that he records and how much and how quickly he can have them uploaded, right? He was using excuse me, other other uh, he was using tournament matches. That weren't his, right? It's not like he was recording his own matches, or at least not all of them. He, um, but he was recording other people's matches, throwing them up, uh, throwing them up on his channel, so he could get the clicks and the views, to in turn pay for the trip. Because when Phil goes to those um, these tournaments, he was staying in really nice suites. He was getting room service and whatnot. He was getting the whole shebang. He wasn't sitting in a regular room. He was in most of the time. He was in generally nice rooms. Well, how was he paying for all that? He was using tournament footage to do so. That's one of the reasons why he was getting cool with some of the TOs at the time. That's one of the reasons why, I think, he was um, close to Team Spooky. Uh, mainly Arturo. Arturo Sanchez is still part of Team Spooky. That's one of the reasons why he was getting cool with them, like, uh, uh, let's see, Arturo, Nerd Josh, Dick Wolf, guys like that, uh, Spooky himself. And he was basically eating off of the matches that were being put up there. And then what happened was he started getting called out for it. People were like, hey, dude, um, hey, dude, what are you doing, man? Um, you know, we're, we were, we were, we're planning on putting up all the tournament matches in format on our own channel. Why are you taking our footage? Or could you chill with doing that? You know what I'm saying? If you want to record casuals, that'll be fine, but stop recording the tournament footage. And Phil got butt hurt, and I think more and more people uh, ended up coming down on him. And I think around Evo, it was the final straw. And I think that's when they kicked him out. That's when I think they kicked him out of the fighting game community. I don't think he ever left. I think he did a bunch of shit behind the scenes that were kind of fucked up. Because if you think about it, too, if you go back to the whole tournament sticks, arcade sticks that they were doing at the time, them guys were cutting into somebody else's market. Um, some of these guys who are pro players ended up bundling together and building their own pro sticks and doing that too. And I think Phil was cutting in on their money also. It's possible. Um, it's usually quality over quantity. So even if Phil and the rest of the guys could crank them out super fast, at the end of the day, it's quality is always going to beat out quantity. So he And he was definitely getting into some trouble with that copyrighted fan art. Or not even fan art, I'm sorry. That copyrighted art from Street Fighter itself. So I'm sure Capcom was wanting to know where their cut was or they wanted a cease and desist. Hence what screwed that up. A lot of what his tournament, a lot of his tournament background and whatnot comes down to him fucking over other people over. He, he was trying to get over on people any way he sees fit. Like, a, like the typical con man. If you can find, if a con man can find the angles in a circle, they will. And Phil was no different. So I think that's what ended up getting him kicked out of the tournament scene. Um, but back to, and then, but that's neither here nor there. We'll go over that at a later time and date. Now, here's the third one. Here's the third suggestion that I give to Dave. And this one should be brain dead easy. This should be, this should have been one of the first things he should have considered doing. Why don't you just go over your DSP trizes? Why not just go back and look at the best and the worst of DSP trizes? 
you could just do that. I mean, you could just do that because I plan to do that. So, you know, yeah, you could just go with that one, Phil, and whatnot. And that right there would probably be a good goal. And it's a good goal that he could do over months, to be honest with you. There are, there, there's easily half a year worth of shit he could pick up out of that. Easy. Oh, there's a problem, though, isn't there, Phil? There's a problem. I know. I know. I, I, was, I was a sneaky little pup when I brought that up. Panda's in almost all of those damn things, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. You, you got me, Phil. You got me. That's why I didn't want to recommend the food vlogs to you, Phil, because I, I was... That's going to be on Gout and Wine, too. But she's in almost all of those because she cooked every meal that was presented in those. <sighs> you can't outsmart a pig, Phil. You, you, you got me. You, 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 you might have beaten this pup at this, at this particular moment. That's the reason why you're running out of ideas because, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just the DSP tries it. It's not just the humiliation from the turn from some of his old tournament footage. It comes down to the fact that a lot of his old shit has Panda in it. And he doesn't want to go down that road. <laughs> if he was ever going to have Cat <laughs> come in and do some of those videos with him, he can't have Panda mentioned in any of those. <laughs> Which, if you guys remember in... Um, in the uh, his uh, retrospective stream where he did the plunger situation, Panda was the one holding the camera, and then you you saw him get kind of skittish when that happened. But he he tried not to show it, and he couldn't just uh, opt out of that video because he was already halfway through it. So something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. But it's okay though. We here at GTG Network and Productions, in partnership with Gautopia News Network, are, will bring you some of those videos. So. Look forward to that. Reactions to what's going on in the game, right? Um, so I don't know. Like, I like the idea. I do like the idea of maybe every other month or something having a special event or a special day where I do, I look back and we go to you know, stuff from my 10 year legacy and we, we watch it together and I commentate on it. But I just want to make sure that this would be something that you guys would be interested in and it would retain interest. Not that we do it once or twice and you guys get bored of it and never want to see it again. You know what I mean? Like, this was a unique thing last week when I did it for the first time. People really liked it. But if I make it a regular thing, are people going to just be like, well, the, the, the appeal is gone. You know what I mean? So I guess we'll see. I want to get your feedback. All right? I do. I want to get your feedback. It's greed. It's greed. Greed is massively strong. I have no fucking self-control. Continuing on. The next year was from Tazariel. He says, if we become patrons, can we vote for No More Street Fighter Five? It's such a tilting negative time. <laughs> Much prefer the positivity of stuff like Dragon Quest XI and such. Well, it's Ariel. <clears throat> as much as I understand what you're saying, because honestly, I do not like Street Fighter V as a game. I just don't. Now, I'll be honest, I've played it over the past month pretty consistently. And not to say that it's grown on me, but at least now that I kind of understand a lot of the shit in now, the Now, here's the thing, and we've already spoken about this. Uh, excuse me. Um, Street Fighter V is a game that Phil is not going to is never going to really be able to do well in. When he gets up into the well if he ever gets the gold, um which actually there's an interesting theory behind that too. Some people think he's sandbagging on purpose with certain matches so he can stay in like low in low gold upper silver, but that's neither here nor there. Um one of the problems with Street Fighter 5 is that Phil's not going to be able to get over the learning curve. There's a lot that he needs to do that fundamentals are just not going to take him. Like, fundamentals will only take him so far. He has to adapt, and uh, in a lot of ways, he needs to assemble a lot of the newer tactics into his playing style, and he can't. He just can't do it. He doesn't have the reflexes. He doesn't have the reaction time. He doesn't have the forethought, and he has way too many excuses on why he can't do it, which is probably one of the things that hold him back over the physical, over some of his physical um, shortcomings is the mental shortcomings. He can't overcome them. He can't. It's a crutch. It's it's a permanent body cast, if you will. It's a permanent body bag that he can always go to. And he'll never, and he's not willing to get himself out of. And on top of the fact that Tut play, pays good money for it, but not just Tut. Excuse me. Tut pays the most. But there are other people who contribute uh, to watching him play Street Fighter also. 
And as I said before, it's exposure, which Phil needs. The problem is, is I think Phil is scared to get into the upper ranks because he's going to run into your pro players. And he knows he's going to get his ass handed to him, which leads into another theory that I have that that's the reason why he stayed away from Street Fighter V for so long. Because if you go to his forums, there are people on there who set, have said for a, a year now, if not longer, I'm willing to donate, you know, this character pack or this season or whatever the case may be to Phil because I really want to see him play Street Fighter V. And he kept saying no, he kept saying no, he kept saying no. But Phil has been keeping up with the FGC because that's why he keeps shitting on them. So, is it possible, is it realistic in some way that Phil purposely sandbagged himself for a year or so to let all the pro players and, and everybody in the FGC get up to these crazy high ranks that he doesn't ever have to worry about getting into and then wait until the demand was so high, until the pot was at its fever pitch, if you will, to go ahead and get into Street Fighter and start playing it. Because what does he really have to worry about about some of these pro players in the upper ranks? Because they'd be so high up that he never has to worry about getting there. And he can still cash in on it. Oh, there's a problem with that. Because a lot of pro players have alt accounts. Same way as Low Tier God. Low Tier God has like six or seven of them. These pro guys have at least four or five too that they just mess around with. Oh, that becomes a problem now. That becomes an issue, doesn't it, Phil? And I'm sure that you've thought about that. You've thought about, well, it's possible these guys have alt accounts and they might catch me slipping. And if it does, it's going to be all over SRK. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. Last thing you want is your fourth place finisher at EVO 2007. You know, number one ranked super turbo player getting exposed in Street Fighter V. It would seem kind of pathetic that you have someone who took fourth place in a tournament... 11 years ago, getting exposed in, a, in the most current game. That might be a problem. That might be a problem. But, ladies and gentlemen, just a theory. Just a theory. It's not a Theo th uh, theory. It's not exactly a, 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 a James the Lesser theory, but it's a theory nonetheless. L let's call it a GTG exclusive. Let's do that. I like that. I like the sound of that. At least I can play it and win matches, you know what I mean? And at least I understand it better. I still don't like it, but I'm definitely at a better place with the game now than I was when I really didn't understand it and I'd play it in rage and everything and not know what the fuck's going on, okay? Um, but the bottom line is right now there's no other fighting games. Like, I, I was loving the, the, the Street Fighter Classics collection until basically people stopped playing it all together and it's very hard to even get any matches in it anymore. So people have been, been, you know, asking me for years to go back to Street Fighter V, so I did. And if you actually watch the Street Fighter V streams, you would notice... Attendance is good. Views, views, views. I don't want to be Mr. Views. I don't want to be all about the views. Anything for this, right? Like, people always show up. People hang out. People seem to really enjoy the Street Fighter V streams. Even though I hate the game, people love to see me play it, okay? So, you know, that being said, I am a variety streamer, okay? I try to, I, I strive to put out a variety of content on a weekly basis. And having the Street Fighter V streams as part of that variety... You know, maybe playing it one or two times a week for a shorter stream has really worked out, in my opinion. It's ended up being more uh, productive than say, oh, I'm just not going to play any Street Fighter, right? It's been good. I'm, well, I'm, wait a second. First things first, you've been doing this for years. People have been asking you for years to give them a session in Street Fighter V, you know, at, on the evening streams where you needed the help, where you needed the viewership two you know, a year ago, a year and a half ago, if you will. And you refuse not, to, and you refuse to do so. You said you hate the game. Why would you play a game that you hate? It makes no sense. Blah 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 blah. But then all of a sudden, King Tut's comes in here, or King Tut comes in, turns you into a cuck, makes you his bitch. You start playing the game, and all of a sudden, I hate the game, but I like the interaction, and I and I and I want to be a variety streamer, despite the fact that you're not really a variety streamer. Just because you play a bunch of different games doesn't mean that you provide you provide variety. What Phil <laughs> what Phil is saying, right, is I'm not someone who's limited to just one type of game. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't want to fall into the stereotypical, oh, I only play fighting games type stream and that's it. What he does not realize is people who only play fighting games, uh, only play fighting games, like, let me see, uh, Infiltration, even though he's kind of under investigation right now, um, Takedo, who streams sometimes, sometimes Daigo, uh, let's go with Smug. 
when you go to a smug stream, right? Not only is that motherfucker entertaining as shit, <laughs> he is entertaining as hell. But you're learning something. He breaks shit down for you so you can so you can get it. You're really taking something away from the stream, right? And you're taking something away from his experiences. And he talks to you about tournaments. He talks to you about tactics. You can ask him questions about anything and he'll basically answer you. And guess what? You don't have to pay for that to happen. Phil doesn't fall into those categories. He looks at those people and those streamers as one-dimensional. <clears throat> because he's only looking at the game. But what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you have someone who plays a multitude of games and provides nothing to those experiences? He doesn't provide any interaction. He doesn't provide any commentary. He doesn't give you any insight. He doesn't do anything except for, in, in some ways, just knuckle drags through the goddamn game. That's it. He doesn't do anything else. He provides you no substance. If anything, the chat is the one who sits there and leads him through it. Last time I checked, I thought Cat was supposed to be the horse. How is it that you have to lead Phil to the water? Shit, a pig knows how to dig. It can find its own water. So, what's the problem? If he's going to act like a caveman and shit, he should at least provide something to you. But instead, he just hits every game and plays every game and treats every game, for the most part, the exact same way. Keep going, keep going, keep going, fail, come up with excuses, come up with excuses, come up with reasons on why it's not working out, look at the chat, and then look at his phone, find out how someone else did it, and then plays through it. That's not variety. I'm sorry. You can put, just because he plays a shitload of games does not mean he provides you any variety, nor does he provide substance. But Phil doesn't understand that. Or he does understand it, he just doesn't want to acknowledge it. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you did anything for 10 years, anything, at all and people came along and said all that shit is terrible you would feel a certain type of way yeah but what would I say to you if seven years ago people told you you know this is this is this is kind of bad but this is what you could do to improve on it and you said no I'm popular or people seem to like it right now so I'm gonna keep going with it only for seven years later which brings us to that full decade you take you 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 sit there and you look and you realize I, I threw away 10 years for nothing he doesn't have any of the money he doesn't have any of the fame he doesn't have any of the influence he doesn't have he doesn't even have the friends the girlfriend the car he doesn't have anything from those from that uh from his previous success it's gone it is gone so how successful was he Yes, we news. I'm hypocritical. Very, very, very hypocritical. Variety's been good. People who maybe like my fighting game content have started to come back to the channel to hang out with me more often. When in reality, they used to just say, well, Phil doesn't like fighting games anymore, and they would just skip out. You know what I mean? Um, I understand some people just hate it because when you watch it, I rage a lot. Being that I grew up as a competitive fighting game player, I've played fighting games since the day Street Fighter 2 came out in American arcades in 1991. So, you know. <clears throat> Almost 30 years playing fighting games, I, I, you know, I have quite a lot of experience when I play a subpar with, like, Street Fighter 5. Yeah, but you're bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is he, like, the, the worst Street Fighter player? No. But he's bad at it. He's really, really bad for someone who has been taking that game so seriously. And for almost 20 years, almost 30 years, whatever the case may be, um, the, he's only good at one game. And then his only real success was in a shitty ass port for it. You know what I mean? Like, even though, as he has said, he has his win over Justin Wong one year and then try to call out Daigo, which would have been laughable because Daigo would have eaten him. Um, he doesn't have anything to show for it. That's why he keeps gravitating to that game in particular instead of anything else. You would think for someone who had the, the well of experience he would be able to transition, he would be able to adapt, and he would be able to adjust to the newer fighting games. Alex Valle can, Daigo can, all the other guys that came around at his time can, but somehow Phil can't. Sounds to me that someone who had a bunch of limitations and got lucky. That's what it sounds like to me. It doesn't sound like someone who has a real wealth of experience. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am.
But I could be, though. DSP News. Causes me to get angry and rage, okay? Laugh, laugh, laugh. Joke, joke. Rage, rage. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Joke, joke. Rage, rage. However, however, um, I, I hear what you're saying. So that's why I don't really try to just do one, one kind of content or, I guess the better way to put it out is that's why I try to do it sparingly. Like, you don't, you notice I don't do Street Fighter Five all the time, all, you know, and that would suck. Imagine if I was just a, one kind of streamer. Imagine if I was one of these guys who only play fighting games and you would have to see me play Street Fighter Five like every fucking day. That would drive me nuts and that would probably drive you nuts. But <clears throat> thank goodness we get variety, right? And, you know, if you want to see the Street Fighter Five stuff, come on by once or twice a week when I play it. If it's not your cup of tea, that's perfectly fine, right? You don't have to watch it. You can just come back for any of the many other streams that I do during the week that are not that kind of content. All right, so Tazariel, I hear what you're saying. It's not your cup of tea. However, there is a group of people who really like it, so we're going to keep it into the mix, for now at least. You know, you got to keep in mind, in three weeks, we got Soul Calibur Six, and if it's really good, maybe I'll play that more consistently as a fighting game, right? And, and phase out the Street Fighter Five stuff. I guess we'll see what happens, all right? All right. And then basically laugh at me. So they're not laughing with me. These are people who are here just to deride me and laugh at me, okay? I'd like to introduce you all to Potion, who's in the background. And I'm trying to find a good place to put him, because I'm putting him in different places. He keeps falling. I want him to sit here. This is a little cool uh, Beanie Baby cat with a pumpkin in his mouth. And he's actually cool. He's like, uh, he's got like a metallic shine to him. I don't know if you can see the purple shine there on the webcam. It's really cool. Cat got this for me for the month. She says you can have this, you know, on webcam as like a, a decoration. I said, hey, yeah, it's one, one quick thing that I can do to make it a little bit more festive for Halloween, right? You're not a very mature adult. Now, here's the thing with that. Didn't he say that, um, uh, say recently that him and Kat went to the mall? And when I, and speaking of going to the mall, um, ladies and gentlemen, this man ended up buying himself a $250 fan. He didn't get it from the mall, though. He said he got it from Amazon. Um, I think it's a Dyson, a bladeless fan. But actually, we don't even know if that's actually the fan that he bought because the the cheapest one that we that people have found on Amazon was two hundred fifty bucks. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, Phil has to have the best. So, in as hot as his office gets, if I had to guess, um, especially with all that dust and everything that's floating around in there, he probably went for the larger model, which is probably going for about four hundred plus, I would think. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so, more than likely. Oh, that's where the, the beanie baby cat came from. No pun intended there. But for something tells but something tells me that Phil bought that himself and Cat didn't do it. Um, the reason why is if you're walking around the mall, right, which I can't even really remember the last time I've been to the mall, um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I do a lot of my shopping online now. But anyway, the last time I've been to the mall, Phil would sit there and probably pick up something nice for the kitties. No pun intended. So him buying that, with him buying it and saying, oh, this will be good for my streams, you know what I'm saying? It'll, it'll be, you know, some of the early decorations for us moving forward would make sense. Because remember, Phil's the one who wants to do all the decorating for his office, air quotes, his office and everything moving forward. He said Kat made the recommendation, but in truth, I think Phil's the one who's chosen to do that. Now... I don't remember if he's done that f the previous years when Panda was there. I'm sure they might have hung up something. But I think he spends a lot of his, they used to spend a lot of their time decorating the actual house more than his office. So, I don't know. It's either here or there. Because you got to think, Cat is what? Between, is between the ages of like 28, 29, and like 33? So, would she care about decorating a room that he's not really in? Or, sorry, decorating a room that she herself is not in? Even if she was wanting to make it festive. But, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Just talking about something that has nothing to do with the game or talk, not talking to me, just derailing with negative shit. Like earlier today, oh, shit, where's Tut? Where's Tut and Tom? He's not here anymore. No more support for Phil, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. I'm here playing games having fun. If you're not here to watch me play games and have fun, then why the fuck are you here? Like, seriously, I don't want to hear about this shit. You know? Holy fucking shit. Relax. Some people just can't control themselves. Why am I toxic? Yep, I'm toxic. Guess what? I streamed for 10 years before Tut ever showed up, and I'll be streaming way long after he's ever showed up. 
I appreciate your support, but it's not the end all be all if he decides he doesn't want to be here anymore. But that's what I mean, chat drama. Let's make the whole chat about That's that. not chat, dr uh, chat drama. That's Phil showing his inner insecurities. He can't share the spotlight with anybody at all. When um, Tut was throwing all that big money at him, he didn't care about publicly sucking his dick. Now, all of a sudden, Tut isn't there. People are showing up only to see Tut. And probably get their free, uh, <laughs> get their free, uh, you know, gifted subs or whatnot. Now all of a sudden it's a problem. But yet Phil was the one who fostered this. He's the one who propagated all this. So now you can't get mad that these guys are showing up, wanting to be entertained by Tut or being able to talk to him, and get their free subs. You know, Jared without the whole underage nonsense, and getting upset because he ain't here and you're turning into a little bitch about it that's your own fault phil you can't be mad at them for that but what it but the truth is he's just mad that they've come to see somebody else but him and here's the funny part ladies and gentlemen isn't he supposed to be focused on the game what is he playing currently dragon quest shouldn't he be focused on that Instead of worrying about what's going on in the chat, which leads into another thing too that him and Wings like to do. Why the fuck are either one of you guys bitching about the chat? Play the goddamn game. And then when you guys get to your save points, your checkpoints, or the completion of the stage, then you can see what's going on with the chat real quick. But Phil, as I've said before, spends like 85 to 90 percent of his time just looking at the chat instead of playing the game. Like. Do you have to be that egotistical that you, that the whole stream has to literally be about you? That you have to control what's going on in the chat? What people saying in the chat is more important to you than the actual game itself that you're trying to beat going into the hardcore begging season. Are you fucking insane? And he wonders why people shit on him and his gameplay. Because there is no gameplay. It's a, it's a... I won't say he's an old man. 36 isn't really that old, but you have, but he looks older than what he, than obviously what his age is. So that's why I call him an old man. You got this old man sitting here ranting and raving about why a bunch of young kids aren't talking about him on his stream. What? And that's the only, and that, ugh, and that in itself is one of the reasons why his Street Fighter streams do so well. Is because they like seeing him fail. It's the only time you actually get anything out of him in a supposed playthrough. Is when he plays Street Fighter and he's failing. And he's losing. And he's coming up with reasons why, oh, I couldn't react to this. My buttons were jammed or whatever, whatever. Or uh, what's going on in, um, uh, what's he playing currently? Uh, he's playing Mega Man 11, I think. And he's already bitching about that. And he's only on like the third or fourth stage. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> so sad. Then I, I, I speak up and I was like, stop doing it. And people are like, oh, Phil's the Nazi in the chat. Like, you grow the fuck up. A lot of people are here to enjoy the game, not to be dicks. Oh, you're gonna get salt, 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 salt. It's, oh, even now, I'm getting my mouth overpowered with salt flavor. Cat, you need to get out now. That place is toxic. Oh, the guy who made that sign, by the way, was the same one who did the Sean Ranklin. Uh, shouts out to Sean Ranklin sign too. It's good shit. It's really good shit, actually. Like that. Th this this is starting to turn into an annual tradition. Uh, tradition, because this is the second year in a uh, in a row. I don't think it's the same guy though, but it's certainly the second year in a row. So that's cool. Do you know there's like a guy in uh, our group right now who's like streaming this whole thing? He's sort of like semi-famous. Oh, I do. I think that's Fuck Said Phil. He I'm was the guy that got caught for masturbating in front of children. Yeah, yeah that's so so he, he was caught masturbating. I think he's like 35 <laughs> years old. Oh my god. Yeah, he was masturbating in front of children. That's on right. On YouTube. Yeah. Live stream. Hilarious. 
He's, he's, like, he's a pervert or something. I think he's a That's pervert right, I'm a huge something. pervert, guys. That's all I do. I just masturbate constantly in front of children. You're absolutely right. That's you what I'm known for. You got exposed for doing that. That's, I got pro that's completely like... exposed. Absolutely. Yeah, you did. You didn't know, even know the camera was on. You know every inch of my dick and balls. Are you the guy? Are you the guy? You know every inch of my dick and balls. It's the guy <laughs> watching his Twitch. Is that really him? Is he the yes. one that got caught, Matt? Yes! Really? He was the guy that got caught masturbating in front of children. I think he's I'm like 30. He's like in his 30s right or now. something. He's in his 30s and he did that in front of children. That's right. Yes. I, but I'm, I've seen so purpose. much, I'm, I'm a fan. What? I don't know what to say. <laughs> of course. Of course, and I did it on purpose. That's why I'm still on Twitch and I'm still on YouTube and not banned, right? Yeah, so you didn't get banned, you didn't get fired from any MCNs or anything, right? No. You didn't get fired from the cinema? No? No? No, no I didn't. No? Oh, you didn't, no. you didn't get released? And what about Laveria? Laveria? Oh what my they god. Do? They dropped you. They no, they didn't. They when I found <laughs> out that video. And I really feel bad for Leanna because she seriously has mentally oh problems. And I feel bad oh, for her. Really I feel personal. bad for her because Leanna is innocent. <laughs> and you're the one. Here we go. What pasta do you prefer? I now here's the thing. I <laughs> seeing Phil squirm is always funny, but when you look at that scene right there, right, it comes to the conclusion, a rather dreadful conclusion, that he'll never ever be able to live that down like ever like if phil and, and this will happen one day phil's gonna have to get a real job one day yeah if he does people are gonna mass email that video to everybody to everybody that's in that office he is fucked day one or week one at least um if it's probably a good thing that he never has children because the last thing he needs is someone sending that to every kid at that school and every teacher and whatnot like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand, for Phil, anyway, he never has come to the realization that every move he makes affects something else down the line. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's himself, whether it's his family, whether it's whatever the case may be. And that's why he's so limited as an individual. His limitations as a person is the mirror image of what his limitations are as a quote-unquote businessman. He doesn't have a lot of avenues available to him. A lot of them he cut off or destroyed himself, but a lot of it comes from the thoughtlessness. It comes from the lack of foresight. It comes from the fact of you didn't treat people well, and then those people ended up coming into power in some way, shape, or form, or fell into some influence, and now you're really screwed. You know what I mean? And, ladies and gentlemen, I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I, because I'm sure all of you guys know, but I'll do it anyway. You should always be thinking two or three steps ahead. And anything and everything that you do. And somehow down the line, Phil has never figured that out. He would rather cheat, lie, and steal instead of just working hard. Just putting in the time. You do this for a living anyway. Isn't he the one who says that he's so lucky that he gets to do this, this, that, and the third, and, you know, not everybody can do it? Then why not put the time in? Why not actually give it some real effort, if that's what you want to call it? Instead of just keep sloshing around and just running off the seat of your goddamn pants. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I could be wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network and Productions. I've been your host slash anchor GTG and I'm signing off. <sighs> it's amazing how you can get yourself a nice fan. A nice fan. Well, who the hell needs a two hundred and fifty dollars fan anyway? Or two hundred and fifty dollar plus. We'll do that. Who the hell needs a two hundred and fifty dollar plus fan? You couldn't go to Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Lobes, and get just a real nice fan for less than fifty bucks? Like, are you really that high maintenance? <sighs> Guess he never learned how to ball on a budget. <laughs> Uh, I'm, anyway, this, I'm your host slash anchor GTG and I'm signing off in the broadcast. Oh, amazing.